two evaporator coils in a walk-in box with one compressor. Now, for a lot of those 7-Elevens, they have one compressor for those glass display case. You may have like three of these blow units in the box, but it's only one compressor. Yeah, I think it's the one right. that me has. <laughs> and because the distance is so short, this that he's showing us here is not that, like that, that critical. We more, more or less end up doing this, all right? Instead of doing this part and this fancy smancy thing up here, we do this one. We you tie in the suction of this one to the suction and that to the suction, that one straight pipe in. And, and then you put a P trap. And you put a P trap. <coughs> on your, you know, on your thing is, Yes. Thing is, if you put the P trap there, you really don't run into any kind of oil retard issues. Mm. And um, I mean, for the past 40 years I've been doing this, I never had an issue like that doing it that way. You know? that, that P trap only goes there if the compressor is above. Yes, so only if the compressor is above. If it's over on the, if it's on the side and below, yeah. you don't need a P trap because oil no, is drained. But what you will need is make sure there is no rise in this suction line. It has to never be level or slope downwards. Down down. Never slope slightly up. Yeah. Right? Never rise. You if, you're using, rise if you're using two bit instead of rigid piping, you need to be absolutely sure that two bit is straight. straight all right? Right? So when you roll it out, you kind of roll it on the floor. Yeah. Yeah. All right? Step on one side and then step on it while you're rolling it out. Yeah. So you keep it straight. straight as possible. Yes. You don't want any kinks in it. And one thing kinks do too, it creates um, areas of pressure drop. Pressure drop, you get turbulence. And for those of you guys who fly and you encounter turbulence in a plane, you know what it feels like? The plane go like that and it drop right down. That's all right. Yeah. Not that's all right. No, that in itself, that's not bad. But you see what a low, low pressure area does? It can't support the plane now. Low pressure area and these things create turbulence, create an area of low pressure. And once you have low pressure, two things, two things make refrigerant boil low pressure or high temperature. Yeah, so you're going to flash. So <laughs> you're going to begin flashing right in where you don't need it again and you lose efficiency. What would you say if we were charging a unit? Okay, and the evaporator, this is a residential unit. The evaporator is at like 20. And it froze up, and we're charging it. That's on the charge, right? That's on the charge unit. The superheat was 40 degrees or something like that. That's on the charge. That's on the charge. Or, okay. Or, or restrict restriction in there. There was no restriction. Okay. All right. <coughs> it's on the charge. <coughs> we fill it. All right. It's 410A. And uh, we're filling it. <laughs> And there's no rise on the low pressure what side. The it was still, it was still frozen while you were. No, 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 no. Shut it off. Let it thaw out completely for the day. Um, no, that was a, that was more than 24 hours ago. You let it thaw out. Yeah, that day. yeah. But I went up and checked. It wasn't frozen. But you didn't open the panel. You just well, checked the pipe going in. The pipe temperature and everything. Right. But um, then we heard a pop and a hissing. And one of the lines blew? No. no. Nothing. Just a pop. And then, it, then, the, then, the, then the evaporator pressure went right to 40, right on the button. But then the head pressure started going to 600 PSI. Then the needle was spinning so fast I couldn't see it. Okay, that means right downstream of your metering device, yeah. where the distributor is, you probably had a teeny weeny little bit of solid crack. Saying, yeah. And because now you have a such a huge difference in pressure with it, that coming low this coming in high it is going to force something out of the way that's four ten eight yeah no <laughs> you know, it is going to but now it. but still the pressure is still fucking high now now yeah, you probably had to overcharge it right I, I, I think it's overcharged now you probably overcharged then it we let that some thing. gas out then we let some gas out and then the the head pressure is up is okay, but then the evaporator. Head pressure is not okay. The head pressure. What temperature are you getting yeah, in the evaporator? How can you say the head pressure is okay? Will you let me talk to him? Yes, the head pressure was uh, we were, you were at just you were, under four. It was bouncing between three seventy five and four fifty. Four twenty five. Oh, we left. 
The evaporator went back down to 30. 30 degrees? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And And you, the at that point in time, is playing with it. Yeah, at that point in time, it's um, that's classical indication that you do not have enough refrigerant going forward. <coughs> Thirty degrees, because I think four ten a, you can operate that coil as well as forty five without coil. Yeah, thirty five. But this is, the TXV is throttling constantly. Throttling. It's constant. One ten all the time. Yeah, ten degrees constant. Something. And I mean, that's one of those 14.5, 3.5 ton condensing units with the four ton air coil that they put Okay, and what was it? It's rude. Right, I'll tell you what you can do. When you charge that system, right? Yeah. Forget about looking at your head. Um, suction pressure. Do not charge by yeah. suction pressure. Well, I mean, charge I relevant to oh. ambient. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Always. Forget about the suction pressure that's going to drop. And then let it run a while. If not, that pop on hissing, right. you will need to take apart that section of the XV and clean it. Well, it's over now. It's it's stopped. Stopped. Oh, everything stopped? It's stopped. It what should the head pressure be? It's got to be 20 it's degrees split. What should the head pressure be on a unit that's operating correctly? It's relevant to ambient temperature. If the ambient torque. It's if the ambient is uh, <laughs> if ambient is 95 and it's a 14 point five 14 sphere, yeah. then it's plus um, plus 25 or 20. Now the manufacturer give you this. If in doubt, shoot for 20 and then see how your unit perform, and then you can go up to 25. Let's say. Like you said, it's 20, right? Yeah. So my CST now is equal 95, 105, 115 degrees. Yeah. So I'm not sure what the pressure will correspond to, but once you get this temperature on your high side, you should, and the, the low side should fall right into place to give you a 25 degree coil. Yeah. Well, that, that temperature was at, it was at 105 yesterday, and it was about well, yes. 75 degrees out yesterday. Well, that come, we 105, 30 degrees. 105 or 70 degrees outdoor, it should only be about 90 I know, degrees. I know, I know. But here, here's the whole goddamn thing. With that the coil tool, I stuff all the way outside to the compressor. I don't know if you remember yesterday I was telling you guys that a lot of the TXVs they're designing need to see liquid yeah, going into it at 100 degrees. So here's where now you got to feel for that last bit of charge because we need to get that temperature for the um, high side. Above 100. We're <laughs> pretty close to 100. 110. Uh, that's what we left it at, yeah. 110. The thing is, I like to see 105 to degrees of um, liquid going into the, my, my metering device. All right. And that, that would make my units behave as they we should under any condition. We left it at 110, right? So, yeah, leave it at 110 and see how it's working. The thing is, though, if we had a slight blackness, depends what I can do. Yeah, it's all the way, all the way down the line set to the outside. So, they're gonna end. They're gonna, it's the same thing with refrigeration systems, you know. Even though you expect, I do expect that as refrigeration systems, box temperature starts to reduce, you will get frost building up on you, you operate a coil. That is normal because I'm operating below freezing. Yeah. But it's, there's a difference between frost buildup and ice formation. When you begin to get ice formation, something is wrong. This was ice, all right? So something is definitely wrong, and it is internal. And it could be, because the TXV is haunted, it has to be a blockage someplace in the little orifice. Well, we could have that out, then, because it was at 40 on the, on the note. Did you take it apart? No. You have to. You got the temperature between the uh, uh, truck? I'll wait. I'll wait. Uh, it's brand new. We just put it in. Brand new. Memorial yeah. Day, we put that in. Okay, here I have new flash news. Um, Memorial Day, they put the new flash news in. Yeah, I know. 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 Yeah, I know.
I had a problem with the gas station rooftop unit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same problem you have. Yeah. All right. And I'm going nuts. And uh, you know, it was the compressor was kicking off an internal overload because it was overloaded and high air pressure, and it wasn't getting enough refrigerant to cool it. So I, you know, I was. I didn't have my instruments, and I didn't feel like climbing down the ladder wow. the truck. So I was doing this touchy feely thing. Yeah. And I'm at the expansion valve, and right at the distributor, I'm holding the distributor here, the exit, the expansion valve, and I'm holding it with all these little tube ends, and touching it. And this is freezing my freaking finger off, and this is burning it with heat. So, you know, uh, so right in that <coughs> little orifice, there was a half a, half a, Little wrong, right? That's what we thought we were You see, when I started it, I took my scanner, the adjustable, yeah. and I banged the damn thing, and I hear the same hissing, and the pressure started coming in right. place. But then eventually, the same little thing went back into the hole, uh, and perhaps we blocked it, so I had to take it. We cover the gas, because no, you can't come down. It's yeah. a rough top shelf right there. You got the gas, sweat that out, but I had to take the whole thing apart just to sweat that out to move it. Uh, and there was this little nice little wrong he just saw that looking at me. Uh, he's going to have to pay for that. That's yeah. not our fault. That, that's manufactured. Yeah, it's a manufacturer. <laughs> but it was too late to, to claim it. No, well, this is not. All right. Attention. Thank you. See, over here it shows the trap every 10 feet. Yeah. yeah. See, I prefer go to 10 feet than right. 20 feet. Right. I, feel, I feel kind of safer doing it 10, guys. And this here, this 10 feet thing, is more from experiencing difficulties with the longer placement than And I find this works perfect, and I have no reason to change it. And um, you know, once you're doing your estimates, you estimate for two instead of one. You got it. Yeah. Now he's got it on the high side. I thought you supposed to have a trap. Huh? It goes off at the curb stack, goes back up. You always got to it's called a bean trap. Yes, trap. that's called a, um, it's like a double trap. Mm -hmm. right. Now he's got it going up to the condenser mm -hmm. too on the high side. Yes, you see, here's, here's the thing. I can do two things. I can trap it here, the discharge, because oil will come out with that refrigerant. And if we don't trap it, there is going to be a pocket of oil in this thing <coughs> always and it's going to restrict the floor vapor refrigerant. Yeah. And on the off cycle, this will... When it shuts off, it will... Open. Yeah, it will just settle down to the bottom there, and then when it starts, it's going to start on the heavy load, because there is a back pressure. So I have two choices. I can either put the trap, which is cheap, or I can put the oil trap right here to return oil to the... Yes, but you know what? That's that's a little bit expensive, and it's um it takes up a lot of space to do it because most of the time they come, if you look at those condenser units, you know, they they come at a fixed space. All right, they don't have space for me to put anything additional on them. So P trap is so the trap, and like I said, you know, they're cheap. Way cheaper than an oil oil trap. <laughs> okay. He's got heavy twenty feet Yeah, he got it, but I go test it. <laughs> and you know what? You will if you follow this, there are times when you will say, damn, why the hell didn't I trap this thing in? What's the loop to the floor? Why to the floor? It's, it's a trap, but why? 
Actually, it's not touching the floor, right? No. It's the, it's the pre trap that is looped toward. It is looped towards the floor. It's oh, not okay. To hit the floor. Oh, all right. All right. It's a regular pre trap. All right. And they come pre-made, or you can get one, two, three. You can get elbows. Huh? Yeah, you can get one, two, three elbows and make up your own trap. Same up here, you get one, two, three, four elbows. Yeah, but that would cause trap. restrictions, wouldn't it? More restriction? It will cause resistance, yes, yes. resistance of flow. Because uh, in refrigeration system, every, every 90 degree fitting you use there is equivalent to about five to seven feet of straight run. Right. Yeah. So four and three, seven, 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 that's like 50 feet of straight run. Same with Which, you know, that defeat the purpose of um, <coughs> buying a line set and you're just gonna increase the load mm -hmm. and the system. And a lot of us don't really think about it. We will size the system three quarter horsepower. And then you put all these fittings, which give you the additional length. Now, to compensate for that, we, we had needed to up that horsepower rating a little more. Because you're already upping it 25%. Yeah, so you didn't, yes, because um, you see, and that's, <laughs> if you didn't up it to take care of the bends, yeah. you kind of get screwed in the long well, run. Yeah. yeah, because you're never going to come down to temperature. Okay, so then we get screwed. Well, if it's a new system. Uh, guys, take a 10 minutes break and uh, turn on the light. So Mike, you're not allowed to braze anymore, basically. It's not my fault. I use hardly any yeah. braze when I braze. Uh -huh. no maybe, maybe I got a volume inspection here. Yeah, right. <laughs>